When you're calculating the possibility of mutually exclusive events, what you're doing is calculating the chances that more than one thing are going to happen when it's not possible for those things to happen at the same time. That's what mutually exclusive means. It means that um, they exclude each other so that if you have one, you don't have the others. And those calculations are usually easier when you're, when you're figuring probability than when you're figuring the chances of multiple things happening on top of each other or multiple things that could happen at the same time. Um, an example of mutually exclusive events might be, uh, say, uh, uh, someone comes into the kitchen and there's a bunch of drinks on the counter. Maybe there's a, uh, a can of Pepsi, um, there's a glass of water, there's a can of Coke, there's a, a can of juice, and there's a glass of milk. So there's five possible drinks here to choose from. If the event is choosing a drink, then the chances of him choosing one of these drinks, any one of these drinks, is one out of five. So that's, that's the probability of choosing any one drink. So maybe, you know, choosing one Pepsi or choosing the Pepsi or choosing the water, for instance. Um, if then what we're looking for is maybe uh, he's coming in and right behind him comes his friend, and what we're trying to do is find out what are the chances of him choosing Pepsi and his friend choosing water. So what is the probability of choosing Pepsi um, and choosing water? Actually, you know what, that's not going to work. Let's back that up. Mutually exclusive events would be a situation where we come in and we say, okay, what is the chance that he's going to choose Pepsi or choose water? So we're instead of just finding out, you know, what is the, uh, the, the case where he's going to pick any one of these drinks, we want to see where he's going to pick any one of two of these drinks, or any two of these drinks. So if we say, oh, I'm still not, not wording that right. Mutually exclusive event calculations would be a situation where we were trying to figure out what would the chances be of him choosing Pepsi or Coke. So it would be the probability of P or C. So instead of just like up here where we would have maybe just the probability of P or just the probability of C, any, any single drink, mutually exclusive events might be uh, P or C. So to figure out the probability of P or C, we need to do is find the probability of P, and then we add that to the probability of C, because obviously the chances of him picking one of these two are going to be greater than his chance of picking just one of them. So to find the probability of P or C, we take the probability of P, so the chance of any one drink, which is one-fifth, and we add it to the probability of C, so that's the probability of any one other drink, so that would be another one-fifth. So that means that his chances of picking P or C would be 2 out of 5, or 2 fifths chance, which is about 40%. So he has a 40% 40, 40 chance of picking P or C. Suppose we wanted to find out what his chances were of picking um, either Pepsi or Coke or milk. So now we have three mutually exclusive events. He can't pick Pepsi and Coke or Coke and milk or Pepsi and milk. He can just pick one of them. But if we want to know what his chances of picking any one of those three out of that five would be, then we'd have one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth again. Or three-fifths, which is six-tenths, or about 60%, 60 percent. 60 percent chance. So if there's five drinks on the counter, there's a little bit better than half uh, chance that he's going to pick either Pepsi or Coke or milk.